Hey guys, if you're a freelancer or looking to start, check out the freelancer bundle from studywebdevelopment.com. It includes a whole bunch of resources to help run your business. Click on the link in the description below and use the code TM25 to get 25% off. Hey, what's going on guys? So React Suspense for data fetching is available now to use in experimental mode and I wanted to do a video on it because it's React Suspense is a bit of a game changer for the framework when it comes to fetching data for your components. Suspense is already available from React um, 16.6 for code splitting, but I want to focus on the data fetching uh, part of it in this video. Basically, Suspense allows us to um, suspend component rendering if data needs to be pulled from an external resource, from an external API or from your back end. So once the data is fetched, React will then render the component, where in the past the rendering process couldn't really be interrupted and we'd run into issues where components would try to render where the data wasn't actually fetched yet, causing us to have to put a bunch of conditionals in certain places, um, which is, you know, has been kind of a, a pain point for React developers over the years. So yeah, the code we're going to write is similar to what you'll find in the docs here. So like they're doing here, we're going to fetch some, we're going to fetch a user and some posts, and we're going to do that using the JSON placeholder fake rest API. So if you've never used this, it just gives you some resources like posts, you can see here, uh, and also users, we're actually going to fetch a single user. So we can say like user slash one, and that will give us a single user. All right, so that's what we'll be doing. And I would definitely suggest um, going over the docs here because it'll give you a lot more information than I can in this in this one video. All right. Um, Yeah, so let's get started. I have basically just a, a, you know, a boilerplate set up. I used create react app. I did strip out some of the stuff we didn't need and we just basically have some text that says hello world. So if I go to my app JS, you can see the main app component, just have an H1, have a container class MY5. So I am using bootstrap just to make things look a little better. I just put that right in my index HTML. All right. And that's pretty much it. Everything else is is untouched. I didn't. I just stripped away some stuff we didn't need. All right, so the first thing we want to do is stop the server and we want to install the experimental version of React and React DOM. So I'm going to say uh, npm install react at experimental. And we also want react dash DOM at experimental and I'm also going to install Axios to fetch data. If you want to use the fetch API, that's fine. I just prefer Axios. All right, so now that we've done that, we can go ahead and run the server again with npm start. Just take a second. All right. Now we need to enable something called concurrent mode. So we're going to do that in the index.js file and concurrent mode. I have the, the documentation page here, uh, which you also need to be an experimental to, to use this. But basically, it's a it's a set of features that it stops rendering from being blocked. So it allows the rendering process to basically be interrupted so that you can improve the user experience. And I'll put a link to this in the description below if you want to read more about it. But in order to enable it, uh, let's see, is it even on here? Uh, yeah, I don't think it's on this page. I don't know where it is. But basically what we have to do is in the index JS uh, where we're calling react dom dot render, we basically want to change render to this create root. Okay, and then we want to just remove the app component here. And then on the end of this, we want to do dot render and then pass in the app component. Okay, so that will enable say enable concurrent mode and everything should still work. Okay, good. So now let's go back into VS code and close up index.js and inside our source folder here, I'm going to create a file. I'm just going to call this api.js. And in here we're going to create our request to JSON placeholder. So let's first of all import Axios Uh, if you're using Axios, if you're using fetch, that's fine as well. And then we're going to have two functions. One is going to be called fetch uh, fetch user. 
so we're going to let's just do a console log here just so we can show when this fires off and we'll say fetching user um, and then underneath that we're just going to return axios .get, which is going to make a request and return a promise so as far as what I want to fetch I'm going to just uh, whoops what am I doing place uh, Jason placeholder So I want this URL right here, user slash one. This will just give me this Leanne Graham user. So let's put that right in there and then let's do a dot. Then I uh, actually put this on the next line. So dot then and then we get our response and we want the data. So res dot data and then we'll just do a catch here. Okay. So there's our fetch user, which is going to return a promise. And then we're going to just also fetch some posts. So let's say fetch posts, uh, fetch fetching posts, change the URL here to slash posts. All right. So we have our two functions here, both of which return a promise. Now, I just want to give you some examples and they have three good examples in the docs here. So the first one, which is right here is fetch on render not using suspense. So typically what we would do is in a in for using hooks, we would make the request within the use effect hook, you know, fetch something or if you're using class based components, you would use the component did mount uh, lifecycle method, you would call the fetch. And then down here, there's a, a example where they're fetching data calling dot then setting the state with set user and then down in the component checking to see if user is null and the reason for that is because the component renders and the data might not be there so you, the, we're checking for the user uh, if it's not there if it hasn't been fetched yet then we show loading profile else we return this stuff here same thing with posts we make the request we check to see if po post is null If it is null, meaning it's not there, we show loading posts. Okay, so this has been the way that we've done things for, for since the beginning of React, really. Um, and then down here, there's an example fetch then render not using suspense. So basically, we have uh, a promise here that we're getting from this fetch profile data, which is similar to what we're going to be doing. Um, but they're returning the promise itself and then in use effect calling dot then setting the state and then again seeing if user is null if post is null and so on. So the last example is render as you fetch and we're able to do this with with suspense. Uh, I almost said expense. So here instead of bringing in the promise directly, we're bringing in a special resource. Okay, it's a special object from our suspense integration and down in the, the components here. We're just setting a, a user variable to resource dot user and then there's a read method. Same thing here, resource post dot read. And then up here, we're just simply wrapping the components in suspense with a fallback. So if the data isn't there, it's just going to show loading profile. In this case, it's going to show loading posts. Okay, so what we're going to do now in our API dot JS file is make it so that we can have this this um, special resource instead of bringing in the promise directly. So before we create the basically the wrapper function, let's do what we're going to export, which is going to be a function called fetch data. Okay, so that's what we're going to bring in to our component. And here we're going to just create a variable for our user promise, which is returned from fetch user. And we're going to create a variable for our post promise, which is returned from fetch posts. Now, as far as what we actually want to return from this fetch data is going to be an object with user and posts. However, we're not returning the promise itself. We're going to return uh, a function called Oops, wrap promise with the promise inside. So user promise and then here wrap promise with the post promise. Okay, so that's ultimately what we're returning. Now we have to create that wrap promise. And this is what allows us this is the wrapper that arouse arouse <laughs> allows us to um, to create that resource. All right, so that's going to take in a promise 
And the first thing we want to do here is set the initial status. So let's say let status and by default, that's going to be pending. Okay, then we want to store the result, whether that's the data or the error, whatever it might be. So we're just going to initialize result. Wait for a promise. And here we're going to create a variable called suspender. And this is going to be set to the promise that's passed in and then dot then. Okay, and inside here, let's say for res, we want to set the status that we initialized above that's pending by default. We're going to set that to success because everything went okay. And then we're going to set the result to whatever is passed in from res. Okay, now if there's an error. put this here. So if there's an error, then we're going to set the status equal to error. And then we're going to set the result equal to ERR. Okay. Now, as far as what we want to actually return from this wrap promise is going to be uh, a method called read. And in here, we just simply want to check the status. So let's say if the status is equal to pending, meaning it's, you know, it's still fetching the data, then we're going to throw the suspender. And that will be caught with the dot then. Okay. Um, if there's an error, so else if the status is equal to error, then we're going to throw the result because remember the result could have either the data or the error. In this case, it would have the error. And then finally, if the status is equal to success, so everything went OK, then we're just going to simply return the result, which will have the data. All right. So we'll save that. And now this will allow us to return that special resource that's needed in order to use suspense. So let's go into app.js into our uh, main component here and we're going to bring in suspense. Okay, and then we also want to bring in our fetch data. And that's going to be from our API file. And then we're going to create that resource variable. And we're just going to set this to fetch data. Okay, so instead of just bringing in the promise, we're bringing in uh, fetch data, which is going to have this, you know, wrap promise for both of these. All right, so now that we've done that, let's create our components. So basically, we're going to have a, a profile details component and a profile post component. And you'd probably have these in separate files in a real application, but just for simplicity, we're going to uh, put everything here. So let's say profile details. So in here, let's do const user and we should be able to now take that resource and call dot user, which pertains to this right here. And then we want to call this this read method right here. So we can say user dot read. And then as far as what I want to return, it's just going to be some JSX. So I'm just going to paste that in. So I'm just returning, you know, some elements with um, some bootstrap classes. This should actually be username. And this is just data that's coming from JSON placeholder. So notice I didn't have to do any if user equals null or anything like that. Um, now we're going to have one other component. So let's go down here and let's say const profile posts. And same thing, we're going to just say posts, set that to resource dot post dot read. And then I'm just going to grab the JSX that I want to return, which is just an unordered list. OK, so we have a UL, got some bootstrap classes. Um, and then we're just mapping through the post because post is obviously it's an array. So we're mapping through and then outputting the title. All right. And then up here in our main app component, which is, you know, where what's displaying, we're going to get rid of this hello world. 
and if we have our profile uh, what is it profile details and what we can do is wrap this in suspense and we can have a fallback so let's say fallback and we'll just put um we'll do an h1 and we'll say loading loading user all right so we want to put profile details inside here okay and then if we want we let's just uh let's just copy this down and then this is going to be the profile post component which will be the unordered lists and for a fallback let's say loading posts all right so let's save that uh wrap is defined but never used where did i do that import wrap uh the hell no where that came from okay so let's go ahead and check it out and there we go so we have the data has been fetched we have the user and the post let's reload and as you can see real quick actually to slow this down we can just go to our network tab and we can go ahead and choose um slow 3G will be really slow if we choose fast 3G that'll still be slow so let's reload and there we go okay so no errors because there's no, the data isn't there yet no um, if user equals null or if post equals null so we just have a fallback if the data isn't there okay so let's see if we wanted to have a spinner I'm just going to go ahead and um, I have this grat this gif I'm just going to bring in so the spinner right here and I'm going to go into my app js and just paste in this component here it's just a simple spinner. Okay, so it's just an image source spinner which I'm going to bring in from this file right here, get some style to put it in the middle. So let's just bring that in. We'll say const spinner equals spinner dot gif. Okay, so now let's say instead of just showing the text here, I want to show the spinner component. And we'll do the same thing here. And save. Let's whoops, what did I do? Um the hell oh <laughs> too much node. Okay, so let's check that out. Let's reload and you can see we get our spinners there. If I want this to go even slower, we could choose. Um... Yeah, there we go. Now, if we only wanted one spinner, we could just have one of these. Like we get rid of this. Oops. Get rid of that and just wrap both in, in our suspense with the fallback. So now if we go back and reload it's going to be slow. There we go, we just get one spinner. All right, so that's going to be it. Obviously suspense is is it's not even in the stable version of React yet, so it's very new and there might be changes to it, but I mean it's a lot of people are talking about it, so I figured I'd make a video on it just showing you at least how to get it set up at, at this point. All right, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.